Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another episode of PSVR News. Let's jump right in with some Resident Evil 8 news. So earlier on this week there was plenty of rumors floating around about Resident Evil 8. IGN was covering us and the source comes from a guy on Twitter who got it from another guy. But the point is these dudes are supposedly reliable when it comes to these things. So that's why these rumors are kind of being given more weight than your typical rumor. Now some of the interesting claims being made in these rumors is that Resident Evil 8 will be pretty similar to Resident Evil 7 in that it's going to be first person. It's going to continue on with the protagonist of Ethan who was the protagonist in Resident Evil 7. Not that it really mattered too much, he wasn't really much of a character, you kind of stood in his shoes if you know what I mean. It's said to feature Chris Redfield in some capacity as well and also the enemies in the game are a bit of a talking point because not only will the traditional zombies be making a return, supposedly, but there's also talk of werewolf-like creatures and ghosts and a, like a shadowy female figure that follows Ethan around and vanishes when he spots her. One other thing to note is that it's supposedly set in a village and castle, it's supposed to be a castle area too, and then a snowy area, a mountainous area. People are putting these things together. They think it might be a European setting because it all sounds very much like Resident Evil 4, at least with the village and the castle. Now, important to note, nothing has been said in these leaks about virtual reality support, but we do know that Capcom, they have said that they were happy with how the PS viewer support on Resident Evil 7 was taken by players. Uh, I believe it was over 10% of all players across all platforms actually played it in VR, uh, which is not a bad number considering that's every platform and only one of the platforms had viewer support and also keep in mind that this rumor is saying that Resident Evil 8 will be in first person as well and first person obviously lending itself very well to viewer especially in horror so there is hope that we will see it on a viewer headset so while all these rumors came at the beginning of the week later on in the week we had this response from another twitter user this guy goes by the handle of aesthetic gamer and this fella also has a record of being right and having insider info when it comes to resident evil at least according to playstationlifestyle.com now this fella is saying that these rumors that are circulating are about a resident evil ace that was in production and has since been rebooted so that a lot of this stuff might not actually come to pass at all. He says he doesn't know for sure what what elements will be kept in Resident Evil 8 but he does know that this is not the direction that Resident Evil 8, the proper Resident Evil 8 will go. He does not rule out the possibility that what's been described will be some kind of spin-off game, maybe not Resident Evil 8. So that's kind of put everything all up in the air again. So yeah, fingers crossed, whatever it is, it's going to be a Resident Evil with virtual reality support because Resident Evil 7 was so, so good. But what do you guys think? What what do you want Resident Evil 8 to be or the next Resident Evil? Let's say it is in VR. What do you think about these rumors about werewolves and ghosts and stuff like that? Is that too crazy for Resident Evil? Or like, is that... You know, fine, because Resident Evil's had crazy animal creatures, like giant spiders and alligators and stuff like that in the past. No big deal, maybe? Let me know what you think in the comments. Next up, we got some Firewall Zero Hour news. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you all that on the 4th of February, Firewall Zero Hour is being added to the PlayStation Plus instant game collection and on the very same day it's going to be launching operation black dawn and that's going to include the new oil rig map the new contractor saul and his ability tactician a new weapon uh, new cosmetics new operations to complete all that good stuff what you may not know is that for the entire month of february first contact entertainment are doing a double xp event starting from the 4th of february to the end of the month double xp for firewall zero hours never been done like that before i think was there a week i think the week is the longest it's ever been so this is uh, unheard of this will give these new players plenty of chance to catch well they probably won't catch up to the top dogs but you know they might unlock all the weapons that they need signal jammers at least and that's very considerate of first contact entertainment if you ask me next up we have some alvo to talk about now last we heard from alvo we were expecting to see an open beta uh, that was supposed to come early 2020. I believe the developers Martin Pole said that they were aiming for January and of course now it's February so obviously that's been pushed back. A tweet from the official Alvo account yesterday thanked everybody who has been supporting the game for the past couple of years even when it was on its hiatus and interestingly this tweet also mentioned that they're aiming for an official trailer next month. 
which sounds like March, obviously. What I find interesting about that is that it makes no mention of the open beta. It makes me think that maybe the open beta is going to be even further away than that. Maybe April, maybe May, something like that. So those of us who want to get a taste of Alvo finally on PSVR, it seems like maybe we'll have to wait a little bit longer. And that does it for this episode of PSVR News. Thank you very much for watching and thank you to these Patreon supporters of mine whose names are on screen now for their continued support. Let me also shout out my top tier Patreon supporters, Tradition, Pete Hawkins, Crum, and Columbus Thomas III. Thank you very much, lads, for the support. I really do appreciate it very much, but I also appreciate that free support, like likes and sharing and all that usual shite. Finally, thank you to Decepticon for letting me use his music. If you want to check out more of his work, go to Decepticon.com. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.